Good afternoon. I'm reading from my book, Memoirs of a Serpent's Head Bruiser. It's available on Amazon. It's on Kindle Unlimited to read for free, or you can purchase it. It's not very expensive. It's a short book, um, and you can read it in one setting. In Genesis 15, 1 through 6, Abram believed in the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abram wanted something, and he wasn't afraid to ask for it. He was counting his words because he wanted to, sit, to use just the right words to talk to God. He was trying to pull out the word of God. He had a purpose when he prayed. He wanted to get the word of God pointed to the thing that he wanted. He repeated it. I want a son. I want a son. I don't have a son. I want a son. I'm asking God to give me a son. This is the way I will ask him. And God answered him. God wanted something too. God wanted Abraham to have a son. He wanted Abraham to have a special son to have a lot of children. He wanted a big family out of Abraham, but Abraham's wife couldn't give him children. Abraham had been there many years. He was about 80 years old and his wife hadn't had any children. He, it was about time to give up, but Abraham wasn't giving up. Abraham knew that there was just one God and that one God had spoken to him one time. Abraham only needed God to talk to him one time. That's all it took for him. God told him to leave his house and his father and go to a place where God said he would tell him later. When God told Abraham he would tell him later where he would go, Abraham knew that God would talk to him again. Since God was going to talk to him later, Abraham knew that he would not be, he would not die before God talked to him again. Abraham knew that the one true God had to talk to him again to tell him where to go. Abraham was walking along, waiting for God to talk to him again. In Genesis 15, God talked to Abraham the second time. It was 40 years after God talked to him the first time. Sure enough, here God is talking to Abraham again. It says, Abraham believed the Lord. This verse shows the faith of Father Abraham. This is the basis for everything we believe in the church. Without the faith of Father Abraham, we would not have had the cross. Jesus Christ would have not come to die for us. We could never be saved. That is the most important verse in the Bible. Abraham believed God. Faith is a recurrent subject of the Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. God spoke and Abram believed. You can't have faith without the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Abram was hoping for a son, but there was no evidence of a son. There was a lot of evidence that Abraham would have no son. It was hard to believe, but he believed it anyway. I was born in Graham, Texas, a small town south of Wichita Falls and west of Abilene, east of Abilene. It was mostly an oil town, but there was also a lot of farming and ranching. My father had been raised on a nearby farm, had decided that he didn't like that farm life too much and had gone to work in the oil field. He worked several years as a roustabout 
and finally became an oil field pumper. He didn't work on the oil rigs, but he provided maintenance work to oil wells that were already producing petroleum. His responsibilities were to monitor the production of petroleum by oil wells on several oil leases, provide maintenance to the wells under his care, and to troubleshoot problems that may arise when he provided maintenance and correct those problems if he could or find someone who could if he couldn't. I recall one of one of uh, his old repeated, oft repeated sayings, if you can't, you can't stay. That meant if you couldn't find solutions for problems that arose on the job, then the company would find someone who could and replace you with them. I wasn't very close to my father. I remember being cuddled and carried about a lot by my mother, my grandmother, and my two older sisters. My grandmother, my sisters, and my mother, and female friends of all of them spoiled me with attention. I always heard, what pretty eyes you have. My father, or the other, on the other hand, was rough and gruff. He was the one that spanked me when I needed it. I guess it was hard for him to compete especially since he worked six days a week. Sunday, though, was his. He always liked to go somewhere. He called it his Sunday evening drive. Most of what I learned about my father was on those Sunday evening drives. I learned more about him from my mother's brother after my father's funeral. My mother and father were 40 years old when I was born. My father's mother had been married to my father's father in Fort Worth, Texas. They were divorced right after my father was born. My father was born in Fort Worth. That's on my birth certificate. My grandfather had children by previous marriage. Their name, like my grandfather's, was Gladwell. My grandfather died before I was born, but my father's sister told me that my grandfather was an insurance salesman and made a good living. When my grandmother left my grandfather around 1918, she came to Graham and married Dempsey Singleton, a farmer. My father grew up on the farm and worked the farm thinking that he was the son of Dempsey Singleton. He used the name Singleton in school. I was, it was not until he was about 12 years old that he learned who his real father was and went to find him. <clears throat> he learned that his brother and sister that he grew up with were only half brother and sister and that he had other half brothers and sisters on his father's side. He continued in relationship with all of them until each one died. I believe he outlived them all. I was the youngest of my father's first children, of five children. Margaret, my oldest sister, graduated from Decatur Baptist College when I was very small. She went on to marry Norman Durst, who was in the Air Force. That marriage resulted in five children. One boy, my father's only grandson, he liked to say, identical twin girls, and two other girls. It was not until years later that I learned that she had given birth to another baby boy before she was married while I was just a baby. The baby was given up for adoption, grew up, and about 40 years later found his mother once again. That was when I found out about him. My grandmother lived in Graham when I was very little. She told me stories about her, sister, her father, William Hyde, the most wonderful man she ever lived, who ever lived, according to her. He had denounced his title 
the Earl of Clarendon to come to the United States from England because of the love for her mother. She had named my father after him. When I was in high school, I received a full scholarship to study engineering in Washington University, but my father didn't want me to go. Sometimes I think how different my life might have been if I had gone to Washington University. However, God has a purpose in everything that happens to us, and everything happens for a reason.